Welcome back to Grow Your Impact, Income, and Influence. I have got an amazing show for you today. We are going to be getting to the stories that you tell yourself. And if you know anything about me, you know that I am a huge believer in this. But we're actually going to start with being a water doctor. We're going to start with somebody who was an environmental doctor. I'm, I'm probably butchering that somehow, but we'll get to it was a consultant, hated what he was doing, maybe not hated either, just didn't like it that much, and moved into the science of meditation and changing your life through both healthier habits, meditation, and the stories that you tell yourself. Um, Dr. Varun Gandhi, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic, Steve. Love and abundance. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm great to be here. Awesome. So take me through that intro because I was kind of all over the place, but you started off as a consultant several years ago around water. That's how we got the name, the water doctor. But then you moved from that into the science of meditation, kind of finding yourself in happiness. And now you are launching a program called the What's Your Story course, which really has to do with personal development, the stories that we tell ourselves. And then part of that is you have a film that you build inside of it. I'm super interested in all of this stuff. All right. So we'll get started from the very, very beginning. Before we actually even get started, we're going to do what you're doing right now is I'm going to have everyone that's listening to this podcast right now take a sip of water because in all the conversations that I've had, people are not drinking enough water. So cheers. Let's take a sip of water. Awesome. The reason I do this is to serve a reminder that we're not drinking enough water, that our bodies need more water. Dehydration, you know, the last sign of dehydration is when our lips are dry. And that's when we usually detect, oh, I'm thirsty. But that's the last sign of dehydration when we're, uh, you know, there's so many levels in between that, that we could still catch ourselves being thirsty. Uh, and I read this book called uh, The Body's Many Cries for Water. And essentially what that book said is there's several many diseases that are currently uh, in place that if you just drink enough water, those diseases will go away. So the cure for those diseases is water, literally water, because he said, look, our body is 75% water. All the medicines, all those things that you take are treating the 25% of your solid body. But drinking water is treating that 75% of us. That's why I kind of do this at the beginning of everything I start. I like it. Well, you yeah. actually start, I mean, you started off as a legitimate water doctor. Like you have your PhD in environmental studies and water. Yes, I do. I have a PhD in environmental engineering and specifically focused on treating water that came to our house. And this is like a particular kind of treatment I was focused on, you know, like PhD is like, like a pinpoint, like you're really, really focused on one narrow thing. And so I was focused on one specific thing, but it was all to do with the water that we drink that comes to the house. And now my sense is, look, I'm not really involved in the engineering aspect of it, but I've been greatly interested in understanding how water affects our body. Uh, and this book changed my understanding of how water, how much the importance of water on our body. And important, uh, funny, that this was the only book that was gifted by my dad to me. And that's the book. I, I, he gifted it to me like 10 years ago. And it was sitting on some shelf, just uh, gathering dust. Finally, a couple of years ago, I picked it up. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so necessary. I need to spread this more. I need to talk about it. Uh, and that's why I'm doing it right now. I mean, that's awesome. So that's kind of like a side note. I want to jump into how did you go? Because so many people, especially during COVID, the last couple of years, have they, they realized that they were unhappy, like deeply unhappy in their jobs. And they went out and they started trying to do something different. They're trying to figure that out. And that was your path. What was the thing that happened that kind of triggered you to, okay, I need to stop being a consultant. I need to stop dealing with that. I need to start doing something different. And what was kind of your path? That's a great point. Uh, a great question. So what happened to me was uh, while I was working at this consulting job, about a year into it, I started having these pains in my stomach area, my solar plexus region. And what that, uh, when I, so I wake up in the morning, I would have these pains, like literally the moment I woke up, literally the moment I opened my eyes and it would be there. And I'd have trouble getting out of bed. 
And a, a question that constantly came to mind was, why are you going to this job that you don't really care about? And so that, with that question in mind, I would talk to my friends, I'd ask for advice, and I would justify it in whatever way that they could come up with. So I'd say, oh, I'm helping the public health infrastructure. I'm doing this, doing that. But at the end of the day, my contribution was probably making a 0.2% difference in the grand scheme of things. Maybe not even that, right? And I wanted to make greater impact. So this pain happened in my solar plexus, my stomach region. And uh, over time, about three, six months into it, I realized like this job was the, the reason for this pain, was the source of this pain. And uh, the minute I gave my five week notice, usually you give it like a two week notice. I'm like, I'm so happy to leave this job. I gave a five week notice. And the minute I dropped that in, I felt so relieved. That pain never came back because I was finally walking in the direction that I was meant to walk in. The cool thing here is I had signs earlier as well that I didn't care for a consulting job. Before even going into my grad school, in between my bachelor's and my grad school, I did a three month internship. And during that internship, it was literally the same thing. I was sitting in a cubicle working on Excel sheets and gathering data, compiling all this stuff in engineering field, exactly what I was doing. But I didn't enjoy it. I felt like I was killing my life, suffocating in that cubicle. Even if it was just a short three months and I still felt it. But then I went to grad school. I was like, I don't wanna do that anymore. I, don't, I know I don't wanna consult. So I'm gonna stay in school longer. So I started with a master's and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna do a PhD and graduate five years later and then figure it out. I'll just kick the can down the road. And so that's essentially my whole process of how I kind of got into uh, leaving my job. Because once I left it, it was no turning behind. Right, so I mean, it's interesting. I don't know if you caught this, but the story that you were telling yourself was, I am making a difference. What I'm doing is helping the human race. And like, that's what you were telling yourself, even though you knew that it wasn't, it, it was true, but it wasn't like really true, right? 0.02% impact maybe. But you were telling yourself like, I'm making a difference. I know so many employees, um, I dated a girl for a while that would wake up every day crying about going to work but the story that she told herself was, I, I need to do this. Like she had several stories in place and that ultimately led to her doing that. We'll come back to stories in a little bit. So what happened when you left that helped you transition from being a consultant to owning your own business and kind of doing what you're doing now? Like what was one of the key cornerstone pieces that allowed you to do that? So, so when I left my job at that point, the first thing, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't have a plan like, oh, I was going to leave for X, Y, and Z. I had nothing in place. I knew I didn't want to do this anymore. I wanted to move uh, past this, that job. So at that point, I said, you know what? One of my friends, he was in uh, the movie industry in India, and he was starting to like dive deeper, writing scripts. And I said, you know what? I'm interested in story storytelling, so I'm going to kind of start doing something along the lines with you. And so the last uh, about a year or so, I was reading on uh, a couple screenwriting books. I'd already gotten into it, sort of. Uh, so when I left a job, I said, you know what? I'm going to travel the world, travel the country, drive around the US, and write a couple screenplays. And so I pay, uh, one of the books that I picked up was called Story by Bob McKay. And that was kind of my introduction into storytelling and how essentially what he says in there is story life is real life, meaning what happens in the story has to look like reality. And so mm -hmm. all of those story elements that he broke down, I applied that to real life elements and how we can take those concepts and change our life. And so through this whole process, uh, also an another key thing that happened was this relationship that I got out of. So right before I uh, started my job in Idaho, uh, that two-year consulting gig, I'd broken, I'd gotten out of this relationship that I thought was the one. After two years, it just completely broke apart. And uh, so I was running away from Atlanta, which is where I was doing my PhD, moved across the country, completely new place, never been there before, didn't know Idaho existed before I got that job interview. But I said, you know what, I'm going to move out there so I can move away from all of this stuff in Atlanta. Uh, and that the whole time in Idaho was my peri period of darkness. That's when I was going through my darkest stuff. And essentially, during that time, I picked up meditation. I read this book by Deepak Chopra called The Book of Secrets. And although about 95% of that book went over my head at that time, 
I picked up meditation. That word stuck with me. And so I Googled it, figured out what my, uh, figured out for myself what meditation is, how to do it. And I started a practice. That was in uh, 2014, 2015. And it's now seven years later, I've continued my meditation practice. And in fact, it's evolved in so many different directions. And we can also go into that if you'd like. That's awesome. I mean, that's a, that is a huge, huge change. Um, I would love to hear. Okay. So you went from graduating college to internship, realized you didn't like that, went back to school, went to more school, got out, realized you didn't love the consulting that you now were into, left that, found meditation. Meditation was the tool that helped you start to rearrange your life and find your life's purpose, which is now using story, not to build a screenplay, but to actually help people reframe their life and use it as a personal development tool. Is that a pretty good synopsis of, of everything so far? I knew it great there. Yeah, that is okay. on point. I might have done this a few times, you know, if anyone's <laughs> listened to this show, this is the, I love this stuff. So, okay. First off, we already talked a little bit about story. Let's deal with meditation first. I have a really hard time meditating. I don't meditate. Like I can't do the, like sit. I've tried headspace. I've tried calm. I've tried all those. I go for a walk every morning. I go for a 45 minute walk, which to me is very meditative. I also run a lot. Running is very meditative to me, but I would love to hear how you found meditation and what happened for you through that. Like, were you just meditating and vision started coming to you? Like, how does this work? Walk us through it. Hey, thanks for taking a moment to check out this episode of Grow Your Impact, Income, and Influence, the number one show helping you reach millions. Have you ever thought about building your own webinar or using public speaking to reach your ideal audience? Well, if you'd like my help with it, over the last several years, I have built more than 40 live events for clients just like you. In the last 18 months, I've helped 32 entrepreneurs build their webinar with over $5 million in cumulative sales. If you'd like to see how I can work with you, or if you'd be interested in having me speak at your event or be on your podcast, go to steven.coffee, that's S-T-E-V-E-N dot C-O-F-F-E-E, -E, to book a short call with me and see how we can work together. All right, let's jump back to the episode. Oh boy, that's a great question. So my initial journey of meditation is uh, a struggle, right? So uh, this is, I've been running the rat race for 29 years of my life at this point. I'd never had an opportunity to sit with myself and have that space where I'm not distracted by anything, right? So meditation gave me that space where I'm not going to be distracted. But now getting into it, Initially, I said, you know, this is not working for me. I would try to sit there for five minutes, 10 minutes. It just wasn't working for me. So what I did is I said, you know what? Okay, this month, I remember it was a December, like right after Thanksgiving. I'm going to journal my journey, write about my five-minute meditation. So I set a five-minute timer. I'm only going to do it for five minutes. Try to reach that first. First three months, I, okay, I could only do three minutes. And I would get distracted. I would thoughts would come in and I would just run with it. Uh, and at that point, I, then I'd say, OK, I'm done for the day. I'm going to move on to my the next thing for the day. But I would come back to it the next day, not calling it a failure. What I said is, OK, look, I did it for two minutes. I did it for three minutes. Let me do it again tomorrow. Let me do it again tomorrow. So I would come back to it every day. And maybe after six months, I was able to do about five to ten minutes. But I had to sit there every day. And initially it was observing my thoughts. So uh, the way I started was actually uh, looking at a point on the wall. Uh, th at that time, I rented a space in my friend's place, my friend's apartment, and everything that I owned was in that room. What I did is I said, I'm gonna sit in a corner and remove all of that stuff from my site, face the corner, and set a five minute timer on my phone and put my phone far away. The five minute timer is extremely important there because initially I realized, look, I said five minutes. I'm constantly, my mind is constantly asking like, uh, has it been five minutes yet? Has it been, you know, and it's only been two minutes, right? So in that sense, I said, you know what? Set a five minute timer. That way I don't have any questions. I can completely focus on this meditation. And the uh, phone will let me know five minutes later that it's time. So 
that was one key that I learned in early on to, to do it for myself because my mind was way too all over the place, way too distracted. And uh, yeah, first six months was real struggle of literally just doing it for five to 10 minutes. That's, I mean, I can't do it for more than a couple minutes because my mind is always like trying to figure out stuff and like things coming in. So I definitely understand that. I love the fact that you called out that like, just because you couldn't do it for three minutes or five minutes, it didn't mean it was a failure. It meant that you were practicing and you were learning. So what, what do you think was the switch that like allowed you to finally get it? Was there, was it just repetitive practice? Was it something that you did specifically? Was there an app? Did you put music on? I like the idea of the timer. That's definitely good. But if your phone is across the room and you can't see it. Yeah. Uh, initially, I, I, I didn't have music. I was in the basic version of it was, look, I'm going to focus on something. Either that can be a candle. That could be an object that I imagine. That could be a point on the wall. That could be me closing my eyes and focusing on my third eye. All sorts of things, right? Music was far away from me at this point. Uh, then I, I, okay, then I experimented with, um, instead of, uh, doing the objects, I'm going to do breathing. So just focus on my breath, my natural breath. Uh, and essentially what I realized is I have to stop fighting. What I was doing in my meditation practice was I was resisting my thoughts instead of observing them. So I was trying to push them away. Instead of saying, look, let's let it run. I'm just going to pay attention to it. I'm just going to observe it. I'm not going to get entangled in those thoughts. If I'm thinking about anger, I'm not going to get angry. I'll just watch it from a distance and let it be. When I made that switch, when I understood that meditation really is that, that's when I started making uh, significant strides in my meditation practice. That's awesome. Okay, so that's the key takeaway for meditation. So what happened then in through meditation that helped you build the story course and realize that the stories that we tell ourselves are really the most important thing that we can change? Because if you can change the story you tell yourself, you can change what you believe about the world, and then you can do basically anything you want. So I would love to hear how we've got from meditation to, to the stories that we tell ourselves. Yeah, so meditation, what that did, one of the main benefits is that it gave me space and time to myself. Like this was true alone time, right? At that point, I mean, this was 30 years of my life. I never had alone time. Imagine that. Even though I was by myself, I was still distracted by something or the other. So now meditation finally gave me that chance to have alone time. So now in this space, I started meditation 2015. All of these what's your story ideas came came to me during the pandemic five six years later so during that years during those six years i was honing in on meditation just practicing it practicing it every day reading books wayne dyer dr wayne dyer has had an, uh, a, a tremendous uh impact on my life you know he's had the the book change your story change your life mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the things that kind of uh, got to me and helped me uh, you know, see, uh, plant those ideas about storytelling. Nice. Dr. Dr. Wayne Dwyer is a great person to read. Um, and he's, he's fun to listen to. I listen to a lot of his audios. Um, that's a really good, really good point. So let's talk about the storytelling a little bit and then we'll wrap this up. But the, the story, I agree, like story is such an important thing. So you have a course called what's your story. And in that, you help people build a film, right? Talk to us about a little bit about what the course is, because I think other people have probably, you know, they've heard like change your story, change your life, but I don't know how to change my story. How do you walk people through that? Just give us the high level. Yeah. Uh, so during my meditation, I had this uh, vision. And this is kind of a perfect analogy for what the film is in our lives. We're in a movie theater, we're watching a movie on screen, right? The screen is a tool that's showing us the movie. There's a projector in the back projecting the film onto the screen. So projector, screen are tools. There's a film inside of it that actually contains the essence of the movie. That mm -hmm. film is what we are trying to create through the My Life film. 
Now, the analogy is this. In our lives, this whole process is constantly happening. We have a projector right here, which is the imagination, our third eye, that is projecting what our film gives it. Gives it. So our film is the memories, the experiences, all of the things in the past that have had an impact on us and that have left an impression on us. That's in the film. That film is directly feeding a projector. And now we're projecting all of these thoughts, all of these stories onto the people, the places, the things in our life. And that is the, the screen, right? I know you're speaking my language, so I don't, I don't think I have to go deeper into this, but essentially that's kind of how the whole storytelling idea came in and the My Life film was created. Like, hey, let's create that film because people at this point, maybe they've not had the experience of, I'm going to do some introspection and understand how my past experiences have shaped me and made me who I am today, whether that's positive, whether that's negative. And that's what the My Life film does. Let's write down all of our past experiences, analyze them, how they have affected us, what beliefs have been created because of this experience, what our self-talk is, how are we talking about ourselves when we are in this life experience. And then uh, once we understand that, now we can transform our relationship to that past experience. So once we move past our trauma, we can now say, okay, I'm changing my story. My relationship to that past experience of trauma is no longer going to be that trauma. I'm going to transform that into something that's empowering me so I can move forward from it. That's the switch, uh, the, the change your story part that helps in the My Life film because you are essentially going through a Google sheet, writing out all of these experiences. So you're having this data, collecting all of this data that's part of your film right in front of you that you have access to at any point in time. So let me ask you, because I think what comes to mind for me, and I, I can share my experience, but I want to hear about yours first and what you would recommend. Because I think a lot of people would say, I have negative experiences. Like when I think about my past, like the reason that our past predicts our future is because we relive the negative experiences. Now, there are ways to fix that, but I would love to hear about your specific ones. Because if you're building your stories, you should be building a positive story that has a positive outcome to it. But if people have negative things in their past and that's all they can focus on, how do you switch that? How do you flip the switch on it? Uh, so that, this is a 30 day course. And over the course uh, of the course, over the period of the course, uh, they're going to essentially start switching that in their mind. All right. Because we're going to give them the tools that they, they need. So one way is to identify the self-talk. What level of self-talk are you at? Uh, the first two levels are negative, then we're starting to move into the positive levels of self-talk. So identifying where you're at in different experiences. And when we consciously identify this for ourselves and write it down, that makes a big difference. Now we're starting to see the patterns. Now we're starting to see the signs that are already there in front of us. And that gives us proof and that gives us the, the means that we need to make this change into the positive direction. And awesome. the other thing I also, I also kind of tell people that, look, we have negative experiences. We also have positive experiences. So in your life film, I want you to write down the positive experiences as well. Your past experiences, your present experiences, and your future experiences, both negative and positive. This way, when they write down the positive experiences, they have proof that, hey, not everything is negative in my past. They have proof that, hey, I have loving family and friends. You know, so this kind of gives them a reminder that, look, not all is bad. Okay, so you talked about it's a 30-day course. How can people get started with the course? Is it a challenge? Is there a web page? Where can people learn more about this? Because I think it is one of the best tools to reframe your past into make it a positive and to tell yourself the story that you want to live. Because if you become the star in your own story and you really love it, you will start to see your life change. So I think that this is really positive. Where can people get started? Get started, you can go on my website. That's drvarungandhi.com. And I'm sure it'll be in the links below. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. All right, we will send people there. If you want to learn more about the story course, make sure you click the link. It is in the show notes. Dr. Varun, I want to say thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us. This has been a super fun interview. Um, you've been a great guest. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, one last reminder, drink more water. On that note, let's drink some water. Cheers. Awesome. And until next time, take action, change lives, and make money. We'll see you soon.